Good morning. We're calling to order uh, our Operations and Safety Committee, and we'd like to start with our Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone, I believe you will have a flag in front of you uh, to join together. Danielle, will that be present? Very good. Thank you very much. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and liberty, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, uh, I didn't say this earlier, but hopefully everyone knows that this is Melanie Williams and I'm the chair um, for 2020 of the Heart and Operations and Safety Committee. Uh, welcome to the February 15th, 2021 Operations and Safety Committee. The meeting format is hybrid. However, we are unable to secure the quorum that is required for a hybrid meeting. Danielle, can you tell me who's located uh, in, on site there? There is only staff located on site, no committee members. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to clarify. I think we were made aware over the weekend, and we do appreciate you sharing with us um, that we were not going to have a quorum, and as a result, we are all holding the call over the, over the phone. So please look at your devices and screens and image of the flag, which is good already, and we've already done the Pledge of Allegiance. So at this point, we just ask that Ms. Arthur, if you will take roll at this time, please. Absolutely. Director Kemp? Here. Director Knight? Director McLean indicated he would be absent. Director Schistler? Director Williams? Here. Director Schistler? Here. Thank you. Thank you. So I'd like to draw your attention, everyone's attention to page three of the packet to review the operations and safety committee rules and responsibilities provided for your information. The rules, portion, rules for the portion are included in your packets on page four. Ms. Mendel, are you on the call? Is, are there any, um, any, any guidance you'd like to give us as we go forward and conduct our meeting? Uh, via teleconference? Yes, and I am uh, in attendance uh, as well virtually. Uh, uh, I am not at uh, the, the uh, administrative offices. We, Since we do not have a physical quorum in place, this will be treated in the nature of a workshop and we can discuss the items on the agenda. Consensus, to a certain extent, can be taken, not binding, and uh, we do have some action items on, on this agenda, specifically the uh, election of officers that we cannot proceed forward with without our physical quorum in place, but we'll, we'll just go ahead and proceed forward as the holdover from the officers from, uh, from last uh, a year. So we can go ahead and proceed forward in that manner. Otherwise, you can fully discuss the items, and as, as I said, if necessary, consensus can be taken, and that would be made part of the minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mendel. Um, so uh, as you stated, we do not have a quorum, a physical quorum. The election of the committee members will be postponed until the next meeting, and I'll continue to lead in that role until uh, further notice. Uh, I know I do want to make a comment about uh, the number of committee members and a quorum. That was something that I brought up in our a board meeting, official board of directors meeting, and asked that the staff as well as um, the chair take a look at what we are doing now and how we could best support uh, being effective in these roles and um, taking the steps that, are, that we've been asked to take on behalf of HART. And so hopefully we'll be able to hear more about options when we come back next time. Set up their statement, Adley or... Um, Ms. Arthur or Ms. Pettit.
I apologize for the chair. What was that? I, last time we were in our board meeting, I requested that we reevaluate how we are conducting our meetings and yes, what options we have. And as a result, we do not have a quorum again. And so it just puts things on hold. And in order for us to be effective in, the, in these positions and represent heart accordingly, I just uh, would like to make sure we're on track to get some other options or considerations um, or adding more people to the committee. Yes, I'm not sure what the options are, but I'd like to, I, I know I asked that at the board official board meeting, and I wanted to bring it up here just as a reminder that we uh, not having a quorum, not being able to conduct business is a hindrance at this point. Yes, ma'am. Staff is working on that request, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. We will not be able to approve the minutes at this time uh, because we do not have a quorum. And this, this these will be the minutes for the December session as well as the January December 21st session as well as the January 25th session. So with that, we look. Uh, Director Williams? Yes? It's Commissioner Kemp. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing well. Um, I just wanted to, um, again, just in terms of um, uh, quorum, I just wanted to restate that oftentimes actually they look to reduce the number of people on a committee rather than expand the number of people in a committee in order to attain quorum, um, just since you raised that. Um, but again, too, uh, I'm just of the mind that on these um, committees, our uh, job is to kind of pre-vet and uh, be there. And I, I don't feel like on the committees that having a final vote is the most significant thing uh, that we do since it moves to the board or, um, you know, gets uh, – vetted there, but having the discussion can be valuable. So I'll just um, add that in. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Kemp. I think that's a very good point to do as much as we can uh, until we get to the vote so that at least when we do have that opportunity, we can, we can, we know our decision and what, what, what is likely to happen. So with that, let me just back up a moment in light of what you've just stated. In regards to the minutes, are there any questions about the minutes that, uh, that that we have in our packet for December 21st or, Janu or January 21st. No, I have done. Okay. I have none. Thank you. So it's a matter of the next time we have a quorum, we will uh, be able to expedite this, uh, the approval of the minutes quickly and, um, and close, that action, close that action out. The next section of our meeting is public comment. Ms. Arthur, are there any um, anyone on the list for our public comment? No, Madam Chair, there was no one pre-registered for public comment. Thank you. Thank you. We will move to presentations, and there are going to be um, a presentation by completed by our monthly safety and security update for January 2021st. Mr. David Kelsey, our interim director of safety, you are recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, everybody. David Kelsey, interim director of safety and security. Uh, today, if you could bring up the We'll be talking about January 2021. Next slide, please. On our agenda today, we will talk about the January accident analysis, some action items that we had going on in January and actually early February were very busy for us, and then I'll take any questions. So what we have here is um, a, a new format. Uh, I've added an extra, an extra column towards the end and basically, uh, I highlighted the January statistics for you from 2021, and then side by side, I brought up January 2020. So as you can see, we've, we've basically flattened out where we're, we're still right around the same numbers that we had about a year ago before COVID hit. And as we're coming out of um, the, the, uh, the shortened... Uh, 
I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Well, we, we've, um, we had the uh, less service that we were putting out, and then basically what, what we've done is we've increased back in November. So now you can see that the numbers came up a little bit from previous months, but we're still, we're still far below what was happening back in January 2020. And on the next slide, I'll show, I actually put some bar graphs in there so that it, I, I think that you'll be able to get a better understanding of, of what's going on year to year. And we, we certainly think that this trend will continue, that we'll, we will see a little uptick from what we were seeing during the COVID months of 2020. However, I believe that due to our, due to our safety training programs that we have going on, you will definitely see a, uh, a, an improvement in the year-to-year -year statistics. Next slide, please. And this is our paratransit, our paratransit uh, statistics. And as you can see, paratransit typically they don't they don't re they don't have that many reportable uh, collisions during during a month. Uh, I, I believe it's because that they, they can pick and choose the routes that they, that they have so that if they see traffic in one place, they can actually modify the route that they, that they take. Plus our, our professional operators are able to modify their routes to get from point to point if, if they know a quicker way or a safer way for them to do that. Next slide, please. So as I said, we had a, uh, we had a, busy, a busy month on January 28th, 2021, the Transportation Security Administration came to our facility at 21st Avenue and they performed a couple of exercises. The first one was they planted a suspicious item near one of our entry doors and they monitored to see if anybody picked up on it and, and reported it. They basically, uh, the, I haven't gotten the, I haven't gotten the after action report from them yet with the uh, with the with the total outcome of the exercise, however, it was communicated to me that our employees performed as was expected. About 50% of them actually went and and identified the problem, but they didn't report it. Only about 20% actually reported it to a person in in uh, management slash supervision, and so it was a uh, we we had what was called a post event training exactly. Right, right at the end of the, right, right at the end of the exercise, when they walked into the building, there was an agent from the TSA that questioned them about what they saw out there, and so they were given the opportunity to come in the building, seek out a supervisor or a manager, and then report it. And then again, about 20% reported it, but the other, the the other 50% of the people that were there, they said they saw it, but they didn't think it was suspicious. And then 50% said well, we didn't see anything, we don't know what you're talking about. So we have a little bit of work to do with, with our employees to make sure that, that they are looking for these suspicious activities that are happening uh, around not only our, our properties, but our service area. The second part of the exercise was we, one of the agents dressed up in uh, just regular street clothes. Actually, he was dressed up like a Buccaneers fan, and he wandered around the... Uh, the parking area, the bus parking area, and in and out of the maintenance shops. Uh, he was challenged by quite a few people as to why he was there and, and, and what and where was his identification. Again, about 20% of the people actually followed through and reported him to their management. The others um, accepted, his, accepted his story that he was there checking tires and they allowed him to continue on without any further, without any further checks. So one of, the th one of the items that we'll be bringing up at our next quarterly safety is to make sure that when you see somebody in, on the property that isn't, that isn't identifiable, that either safety and security, the security officers that patrol our properties or somebody in management is notified immediately so that we can verify why this individual is on our property. And we will continue to have these types of exercises throughout our system. For Super Bowl 55, the Safety and Security Department was present at the Emergency Operations Center for the City of Tampa. I can tell you that uh, we were there for 12 hours a day from February 5th through the 7th. Basically, the time ran from, uh, from noon to midnight each day. There were no activities to report on the 5th and 6th. And quite honestly, on February 7th, everything was quiet until the, the game actually ended and the Buccaneers won. 
Uh, as you've probably seen through social media and the news, we had three buses and one streetcar that people actually thought it would be a great idea to, to uh, climb on. Uh, fortunately, I was at the EOC that night on February 7th, and I was about 20 feet from the Tampa Police Department's dispatch center. And once, once we saw what was going on and we got the call from our operations center, I was able to get with the dispatchers. The police were, were extremely quick to get out to those areas, and they got the people off of the vehicles within three minutes. Uh, there were no damages to any of our, our, of our buses. Uh, there, were some, there was some damage to one of our streetcars. Uh, fortunately, though, uh, the people that were up on the streetcar did not get electrocuted because there is a lot of electrical equipment up there. And, of course, the streetcar is powered by 650 volts DC and that the power lines on top of the streetcar are energized whenever the pole is on the trolley wire. Uh, basically, uh, the motorman, when he saw what was happening, he locked his streetcar down, went to the rear of the streetcar and pulled the wire down, de-energizing it, which probably saved some lives. So we've, uh, we're, in the, we're in the process of recognizing him for his actions and, and safeguarding the people out there. Uh, overall, the, the, the response that we had uh, to, to our operators, uh, we debriefed each operator, and as a matter of fact, one of them said that she thought it was kind of hilarious that people were up there running around, but she did lock her bus down. She made sure that the bus wouldn't move so nobody would get hurt, and she, she kind of figured that the police would be there because they were all over the city, and, and they were able to get to her real quick, get the people down. So overall, it was a, uh, it was a successful event for us. The Joint Health and Safety Committee meeting occurred uh, last week, February the 9th. Uh, basically, this meeting is, is a way for management and the, and the uh, bus operator and mechanic unions to get together and discuss safety, safety issues that affect everybody. I have an agenda and uh, some of the notes that were taken at that meeting, and I can, I can certainly um, provide you with the uh, meeting minutes once they're compiled, which should be today. Some of the highlights from that meeting, basically going over some, some issues that, that have been, um, that affect our operators in the field, such as traffic signal problems, uh, bus stop problems, and, and routes, you know, sometimes we have routes where turn by turn changes because of construction. We wanna make sure that our operators are, are operating as efficiently and as safely as possible. So these are some of the items that, that were on the agenda for this, for this week. COVID-19, uh, unfortunately, COVID is still with us. It'll be with us for a while. There was a mandate that came down through a presidential directive and then filtered down through the Centers for Disease Control, which basically now says that masks are required on public transportation. So we're getting that message out. We're, we're re-signing our buses, making sure that that people understand that masks are required. Uh, I was following a bus over here this morning and actually the marquee now says, instead of just masks required, it says masks required, it's the law. So our, our operators are reminding people out on the, that get on the buses that, that they must have a mask on to use public transportation. And we're working with, with uh, our supervision, our security staff, and our law enforcement groups to ensure that, that we're, we're enforcing this, this mandate. Because it, it's, not, it's not about you know, taking away people's freedoms. It's, it's about keeping people safe. I mean, it's, this is the bottom line. It's, it's basically just keeping people safe. So we're going to do our part to, to help our community and keep our operators, keep our patrons, keep our citizens safe. And then finally, post-event training, as you can see, uh, through the Transportation Security Administration exercise and the Super Bowl uh, activities that we have, we continue to meet with our employees after an event occurs. We, we come up with after-action reports. We, we look and see if there's anything that we missed. Can we do it? Is there anything that we could have done better? And we're going to keep doing that. We're going to keep pushing forward. We're, we're going to make this transit agency a shining example for everybody else in the state of Florida to, to point towards and say they got it right. And we're going to keep doing that. And the end goal is to keep our people, our employees, our customers as safe as, as humanly possible. 
we might not be able to, to get to that 100% point where we don't have any accidents or we don't have any incidents, but we'll keep reaching for that and we'll keep trying to push it forward as much as we can. Next slide, please. And with that, I'll take any questions or comments. Director Williams. Thank you so much for the presentation, David. Uh, Commissioner Kemp has a question for you, and you recognize Commissioner Kemp. Thank you. Or just a comment. Um, I had no idea that people would think to uh, jump on the streetcar. And, and I mean, when you talked about that, the bus is one thing, not that that's safe either as long as the bus driver knows they're there that's an extraordinarily dangerous uh you know event in itself the streetcar was just that i mean the, the fact that we could have lots of life or uh you know it was just shocking to me um that people don't have any fear and uh, don't understand that these are you know dangerous um and i'm just um, wondering if there's, uh, you know, I mean, thank God we took all measures and nobody was hurt, but uh, is there, um, I, I didn't catch necessarily it, uh, any thoughts about next time just <laughs> in prep? Yes, ma'am. One, one of the things that we'll be doing this, this week is we'll be having an after action meeting with all of the, uh, all of the departments here at heart. And, and I, and I think what what will happen is is, is we, we will we will look at our response we, we'll look at was there anything else that we could have done maybe curtail service into some of the areas where we knew there was going to be a lot of partying I mean qu quite honestly we have we have run streetcar service for Gasparilla back in the day before they before they shut it down Guavaween New Year's Eve and I can't remember a time when we actually had anybody crawl on top of the streetcar so this so this this was definitely something new, uh, but there, there's always there's always room for improvement, and I'll be having that discussion with the operations group, and and go, and going forward, we we will have another response, and and we'll improve upon upon this activity that happened this time. I, I appreciate that. The only thing too about cutting off service is um, we you know um, we, you know when you see an event like Gasparilla, nobody can get out of the area. And the streetcar um, almost seems de minimis in terms of the needs, you know, uh, for that and any almost anything we can provide. And I'd also not like us to go into a direction of not doing that because I think it's really important for us to be able to get people out and uh, help uh, help with the crowds. I would just add that about it. But thank you for uh, um, it's just kind of shocking to hear. Um, and uh, and I was running through my head what you do about that but I I uh, I would hope that you know not doing service is not um, is not something that that we focus on because I think it's especially important uh, during those times to do service yes uh, commissioner poor choice of words on, on my part I didn't mean cut service and just shut it down Basically, what we were looking at on on the night that this was occurring was actually stopping the uh, stopping the you know from going all the way to the end of the line. And in, in other words, you know where where there were the big masses of people congregating and they were on the tracks, we would stop a station before that just to ensure that 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 we weren't going to um, have any unfortunate accidents. It's it, it is important to keep the service running and and quite honestly. Uh, we, we even looked at that for the Super Bowl parade because we didn't know what to expect there and we did have a contingency plan with, uh, with buses in the area to help get people out as well as um, you know, stopping the streetcar at a certain station so that it wouldn't go into the area where, where the people, you know, the most of the people were that were congregating on the tracks and the congestion would have just been um, basically too large to get that large vehicle through there. Uh, but I, I, I can also tell you that we have been working with the Tampa Police Department in the area, and they're well aware of, of the streetcar being used to get a lot of people out of a given area in, in a short amount of time. And so they, they do their best, if they're not overwhelmed, 
to make sure that we do have the ability to continue to roll on the tracks unimpeded and, and safely as possible. So I, I just wanted to clarify that for you. Right. I, I just, I, I, I understand and thank you for the clarification. Thank you, Commissioner Kemp. Uh, Council Member Schisler, you are recognized. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Kelsey, great report. And um, I was just sitting here absolutely amazed that somebody would try to crawl on top of the streetcars. I hadn't heard anything about that. So first of all, express our sincere gratitude to the driver and the operator for knowing what to do. And that, that, that shows well the, their, their training and the, hey, if this happens, that could happen attitude and thinking forward. So express to him, our, I know you're going to do something, but let him know that, or him or her know that uh, we're glad that they were thinking and, re and reacting appropriately to, to avoid a disaster. Now, to try to foresee everything that could possibly happen, it's really hard to fix stupid sometimes. <laughs> uh, we're, 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 we're very lucky that nothing did, uh, the ultimate disaster did not occur. So kudos to that, to that, to that operator. And uh, I'm sure that you guys will do everything you can to um, uh, signage whatever in order to, to, to let everybody know that that's a lot of dangerous uh, apparatus up there. I did not know the voltage. Um, anything, or any, anything over a 9 volt battery scares me. So uh, I, I stay away from it. So, uh, but uh, no, kudos to you and your staff and, and to, to all of Ruthie's and, and Scott's people. Thank you. Thank you. I, I don't see any other hands raised. Uh, however, I would like to acknowledge um, the sentiments of uh, uh, Congresswoman, well, actually Commissioner Kemp <laughs> and Councilman Gisler. I think those are very good points. And, and what I also want to echo are the actions that are being taken by the operations and safety team in light of COVID. So to see the training that's underway, the, the emphasis that's on focus, I and mean, this continues to be the focus for COVID-19, and then even in the events that are taking place, the testing of the, of the um area to ensure that it's safe and it's okay to challenge and while I understand there are a couple of things you're going to work through there it is it is showcasing that we're getting back to more like normal and doing the steps that are, are taking the steps necessary for us to for us to keep uh, operations and safety top of mind so David thank you so much for the presentation and all of those who supported you in, in bringing this forth today Thank you for the opportunity to yeah. speak to you today. Thank you. Are there any other questions at this time? Okay, if there are no other questions, we will move on to uh, the presentation by Crystal Huntley, our Interim Chief People Officer. She will give us an, an overview of the HEART Virtual Online Training. Crystal, uh, you are recognized. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair and committee members. Um, this is Crystal Hunley, um, and I think that after David Kelsey's presentation, this is just a perfect segue into so many things, um, dealing with how we take today's current environment and we continue to train our people on anything from safety to actual um, skill enhancements for their positions. So on the first slide, we'll go through, um, you know, this is what it was like back in what I like to call the olden days, right? That's anything last year <laughs> that was pre-COVID. Um, we had in-person training, instructor-led training, where um, it was that typical classroom setup. We had one person teaching a room full of people, hands-on, um, or it, as we call it, instructor-led training. The next slide, we'll talk about some of the resources that we've really had to tap into that are absolutely free to transit professionals. And this is something that is able to be done virtually or online, right, computer-based training, so that we aren't having to bring groups of people together and we can really, again, utilize these tools that have been there 
And COVID um, has helped push us to really utilize these um, and, and bring them, incorporate them into our normal everyday practice. So the next slide talks about the um, maintenance training that's available. These are, um, some of them are free, some of them have a low cost, but essentially they offer anything from a, a presentation online to videos that you then take a knowledge test and you can gain certifications um, right from a, a computer-based uh, program. So this is another thing that our maintenance staff are able to utilize. Our next slide is some of the trainings that we have already been using, and this is our partnership with Cutter. These four classes have been utilized as optional classes for employees, uh, new, new operators, to when they're coming through the new operator training, they can do this at home. Of course, they are absolutely paid for their time that they uh, take to do the class. They bring their certificate back and we add those, uh, those hours, those class hours to their time cards. So this is something uh, that we've already been tapping into and we really like to expand on this um, as we you know, explore these, these opportunities that are not the typical classroom instruction. The next slide goes into some of the things that we're proud of that we've done through COVID. Um, we incorporated a hybrid compliance training. So this is our quarterly safety trainings that, again, we have 800 employees and we bring them through uh, classroom situations where we, we do our annual trainings, so everything for compliance. And then we also tap into some of the operator uh, or maintenance specific training. This year, what we've done is we had a hybrid option. So we had some of those uh, compliance trainings offered through our WebEx platform or through um, the computer-based training. Um, we have our, our ADP is our platform that we use for our HR management. And we are very excited to finally be rolling out at the end of this month the uh, Learning Management System, or LMS. This is our computer-based training. It's a catalog of so many uh, topics. So think of really any category from customer service through Microsoft Office trainings that are absolutely free that our management team can assign courses to their, uh, their employees. The employees can take these trainings um, at their convenience, whether at home, in the workplace, and um, gain those skills that are housed and, and recorded in their system, in our, in our ADP system. So we've been going through pilot testing. We've been doing a slow rollout. Things are looking really good. And again, we're very excited to have this rollout um, in the next uh, couple weeks. We also have been really, as we are today, utilizing these WebEx uh, capabilities to connect, whether it's on meetings and certainly on training um, opportunities. So we were able to do the human trafficking campaign included an in-person, um, as you, you were briefed on this uh, in previous committees and board meetings, they had in-person uh, trainings that were offered. They also offered it through a WebEx platform for those that did not come in person. And then we also had another option, which was the Hillsborough County link for the human trafficking awareness. So we are just trying to, to use as many different um, options as we have access to, to make this as safe, but also um, convenient as possible. The next slide shows that when it's not possible to do virtual or remote types of training, we do still, of course, offer the in-person training. As our new bus operators would come through this training, we physically separate the, the workspaces um, with all the CDC precautions. So I know you see the sign that says social distancing. We're really trying to focus more on the physical distancing as the language that we're using and keep people socially connected. It's really important during this, this uh, you know, fatigue that people are facing with, um, with COVID. So with that, what questions can I answer? Thank you, Ms. Huntley. Thank you. I do not show... 
any questions at this time, I'll just pause for just a moment in the event there will be questions. Okay, I don't show any questions. I, I just will make a comment, Ms. Huntley, that um, this type of training is necessary considering COVID and to find a way that is uh, hybrid as well as that can be done uh, at the office as well as at home, provides several different options. And then lastly, the option of providing the training with the physical space and so forth. So I, I applaud the work you guys are doing to make sure your employees are continuing to be trained. And, um, and, and quite frankly, as David mentioned earlier, there are things that are potentially could happen that we have, not, we have not faced in the past. And so the preparation about people wandering on site as well as on top of the cars and then as, as far as following the processes and so forth, I just commend that you're moving forward and, and making those things happen. Now, will this website be available uh, in the event any of the board members would like to look at the training? Would the uh, all the trainings be available, you're asking? Yes. So the trainings would be um, available for HART employees. Um, I would be happy mm -hmm. to show a catalog of the training op options, things like that, that if, if you'd like me to, to provide that, I certainly can. Uh, I think that would be an option. And if there's something that we see that's happening, that's pertinent, that we may need to be alerted of, maybe we could do um, a high-level overview of some of the training from time to time just to keep us abreast of what's happening going forward, but I, I commend what you've already put together and what you're doing on behalf of safety. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, there are no other questions. Let's see what's, what else is on the agenda. Thank you, Crystal. I appreciate your overview, and um, it's very, very timely. Okay, and now we are on to our old business. Is there any old business at this time? Any new business? Nope. All right. If there's no, uh, if <laughs> the meeting is adjourned, have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank, Thank you, you all for your help. Thank you. And this is Danielle from Heart. If you are continuing on to.